Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth, and welcome to episode three of our video podcast series on Avid Tips and Techniques. Tool sets are a fabulous way to customise your window layout. Though they're not quite as flexible as workspaces, which we'll cover in a future episode, they're still very powerful. And there are six pre-built factory tool sets in the tool sets menu. So here in the tool set menu, we have our six tool sets, color correction, source record editing, effects editing, audio editing, capture, and full screen playback. And you can just switch from one tool set to another just by selecting it from that menu. Now, if you're using a system with either an Avid Mojo or Adrenaline DNA, then the full screen playback option will be grayed out as the DNA hardware is already handling that full screen output. Now, you can make a change to a tool set at any time, but if you do make a change, you have to tell the system to remember that change or that change will be lost if you switch to a different tool set. So say I just switched to the audio editing tool set. Now you can see here that this tool set doesn't ordinarily open up the audio tool, so I'm going to open that up myself from the tools menu. Now if I switch back to source record editing, and then back to audio editing, you'll notice that the system will not open the audio tool because I didn't save the change. So what I need to do is to tell the tool set to remember the window arrangement. So let me reopen the audio tool, put the audio tool where I want it, and I might actually just drag the bottom down to give myself a little bit more scale. And now I'm going to choose Save Current from the Tool Set menu. Now if I switch to Source Record Editing, and then back to Audio Editing, then the Tool Set will remember the window arrangement. Every time you make a change to the window arrangement that you want the system to remember, you must choose Save Current from the Tool Set menu. And that's just here. You can also restore a tool set to its factory default configuration by choosing Restore Current to Default from the tool set menu. Now the system will not ask you to confirm that change and it's not undoable either. So make sure you really do want to do it before you actually do the restore. There is another very interesting option here in the tool set menu called Link Current To. This option allows you to link the tool set to certain settings. For example, you might have a timeline view called Audio. And it just so happens that I do. Now wouldn't it be great if you could activate this timeline view whenever you activated the audio editing tool set? Well you can. You simply have to link the audio timeline view to the audio editing tool set, but before even doing that, I'll switch back to the default timeline view so you can see what happens. To get things started, first activate the audio editing tool set, and at the moment, that is actually still active. Then choose Link Current 2 from the tool set menu. From the Links to Current tool set menu, I'm going to choose Link to Named Settings. This tells the tool set to activate any settings with a specific name. To make the link between the audio editing tool set and the audio timeline view, I'll type the name Audio into this field. Make sure you type the name of the setting exactly. And yes, this is case sensitive. So once the name is there, I can click OK. Notice how the timeline view immediately changed to the audio view. Now I'm going to switch back to the source record editing tool set. Now notice how the timeline view did not change this time. This is because at the moment the source record editing tool set is not linked to any settings so it will simply maintain the last active setting. But what I want is for the source record editing tool set to restore a plain default timeline view. In my timeline view menu I've already prepared a view called default. Now this view doesn't have to be called default any more than the previous view had to be called audio. It just helps me remember. And if you've been in post-production for any length of time, you'll know that simple naming conventions are definitely the best. So now I have my source record editing tool set active. I will link it to my default timeline view using the same process as before. So I go link current to, I want to link it to named settings called default. Now when I switch from Source Record Editing to Audio Editing and back again, you can see how my timeline view changes from default to audio and back to default. So that's how we change the timeline view when we change tool sets. Pretty easy stuff. 
but you're not limited to just changing the timeline views. You can change lots of things like the composer window settings, your bin settings, and even your keyboard map, just to name a few. And speaking of keyboard, let's now set the system to switch tool sets with a single keyboard button. Now I'm going to map the source record editing tool set to the F7 key and the audio editing tool set to the F8 key. Firstly, I need to open up my keyboard settings by going to the settings list in the project window, scrolling through to the word keyboard and double clicking the word keyboard in the list like this. This opens the keyboard map and I can see that this map is actually the default keyboard map. Then I need to go to the tools menu and choose command palette from the list. This will open up the command palette in its own floating window. Now the command palette will not only allow me to map different buttons to the keyboard or to the interface buttons, but it will also allow me to map menu commands to buttons. To do that, I must firstly enable the menu to button reassignment radio button. Then I need to select the interface button or the keyboard button I want to reassign. In this case, it will be the F7 key on the keyboard. Now you can see how the cursor takes the form of a pull down menu when you get to the keyboard map. I then click the F7 key and choose Source Record Editing from the Toolset menu. The initials SE will appear on the F7 key. Then click on the F8 key and then choose Audio Editing from the Toolset menu. To test the new functionality, I need to close my keyboard map and the command palette. And then I'm going to use F8 to activate my audio editing toolset and F7 to activate my source record editing toolset. The features you've seen today are covered in even more detail in the MC101 Editing with Avid Media Composer and MC201 Advanced Techniques for Avid Media Composer courses. You can get further information about our many AVID certified training courses and even register online at www.avap.com.au. So hopefully you've learned a whole lot of new things about how customizable the Media Composer tool sets really are. It's really easy to do and you'll soon wonder how you ever did without it. So until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.